Hi there, I'm Justin Pritchard, and today a look at Nissan's latest little car, or crossover, or something. I'm sorry, I'm a little confused because this is the new Nissan Kicks, and I don't know what it is. Nissan calls it a crossover, and it sort of looks like one, but unlike most of those, you can't have this with all-wheel drive, which is weird. They're all front-wheel drive, which I figure makes them more of a hatchback car. Of course, many all-wheel drive crossovers can be had with front-wheel drive, which confuses things even further, and now my brain hurts. So, what's going on, and what makes a crossover a crossover anyhow? The body, the number of drive wheels, maybe the designation that the marketing department figures will be the most likely to get you to open up your wallet? Turns out you're best not to think about it too, too much. And the point of this thing is that it is a fantastic alternative to a smaller car, and skipping the all-wheel drive makes it cheaper, lighter, easier on fuel, and since there's no all-wheel drive hardware beneath the rear of the vehicle, that means it has more cargo space. And so if you want a small car with small car pricing and maneuverability and manners and fuel economy, but you say want to sit up a little higher and have an easier time getting in and out and need lots and lots of cargo space, then something like this starts to add up. So forget what it's called and focus on what it does. From 18 grand and priced at 22.8 as you see this fully loaded Kicks SR, you've got a tall, flexible, easy to enter vehicle with huge cargo room for about the same price as a small sedan. So it'll hit the mark if you want lots of space, great mileage, and enjoy a more crossover-like driving position. Now that we pretty much know what the Kicks is, let's see what it does. First, and importantly, look at this cargo hold. It's wide, deep, thick, and square. A low load in height makes it easy to get things in and out. It's generous overall, and these seats, of course, fold down for more space when needed. Further ahead, the rear seats are usable without issue by adults of average size, too. You get in and out by mostly just sliding across, minimal climbing up or plopping down, and when you're seated, you sit up in a relatively elevated, more upright position, giving you a better forward view. The way this fits around you enhances your driving position, but without making it feel bigger than it is. It's like being in a small car with a better outward view and more headroom. Look around and take in this nicely done cabin. Remembering that this loaded tester is a sub $23,000 vehicle, you get a remarkable amount of content, including a Bose stereo with a driver's side only headrest speaker, the around view bird's eye parking monitor, blind spot monitoring, a collision warning system, intelligent emergency braking which can automatically prevent certain types of crashes, push button start, heated leather, power everything, a partially digital instrument cluster, a powerful central command touch interface, and heck there's even remote start. Right now there aren't a whole lot of better ways I can think of to spend this sort of money if your main priorities for the dollar are a load of features, a load of safety, and a load of cargo room. This is the excellent Toyota Corolla hatchback that we drove a few weeks ago. Same pricing ballpark, lovely cabin, even more safety equipment, and it's a pleasant thing to drive. But it can't touch the kicks for cargo space, and actually neither can most competitors, including Toyota's front drive only small crossover, the CHR. So, how does the kicks drive? Well, the shopper who appreciates something a little sportier than the norm with good reflexes and who is willing to trade off a bit of comfort in exchange for a more energetic driving feel will feel right at home. On smooth roads, it's on the slightly stiffer side of comfortable, usually taut and sporty, but not jarring or rigid. You're not getting your spine pummeled, nor are you floating on a cloud. It's right in the middle ground, and the steering is a little quicker and more eager than I expected, responding to even minimal inputs with a big reaction from the vehicle, which again means that this one leans towards sporty. That's even backed up by the brakes, which feel powerful enough, but also have a more precise pedal action than the norm. It seems they've found the middle ground between comfortable and sporty and adjusted everything to lean a little more towards the latter. To me, and I love me a sports car, the way this feels at almost all times is excellent. Problem is on rougher roads, where ride quality and refinement are largely at the mercy of the surface passing beneath. Here, more noise and harshness are coaxed from the ride than you might like, and you do have better options if rough road ride quality is a priority, in which case I'd suggest you check out the Subaru Impreza or actually the Volkswagen Jetta. Power comes from a 1.6-liter, 125 horsepower four-cylinder, and all units run Nissan's continually variable transmission, or CVT, for enhanced smoothness, performance, and fuel efficiency. 
The transmission is excellent, unfailingly responsive, and uniquely superb at being virtually invisible most of the time. Operated gently, it's a nicely behaved driveline, as smooth and responsive as you need for around town driving. This CVT transmission just feels like a normal automatic and enhances responsiveness to levels beyond what you'd expect given the engine's output. And even opened up, it hustles along nicely and never sounds much like it's running out of steam. It's not a rocket, but it performs better than the numbers lead on. If you like safety and Nissan figures you do, then you'll like this. I love the good old fashioned safety that comes from a great set of headlights and kicks largely delivers here. The low beams provide lots of clear and clean white light where it's needed most, even if the high beams are a little disappointing. And with all the high-tech safety equipment included as well, this is a good example of how automakers are steaming ahead with more safety for less money than ever. Not long ago, most of this high-tech safety stuff was absolutely unheard of anywhere near this price point. Gripes? The seats are comfortable unless they're cold, in which case they're stiffer than a rigor mortis tortoise. Thankfully, the seat heaters are powerful. Also, the front passenger has no armrest, which is a bummer, and for all of the cargo space in back, I was hoping for a touch more storage near me, up front, and maybe a covered center console storage bin. Ultimately, those after decent driving dynamics with a touch of sporty flair, as well as top levels of safety gear, cargo space, feature content, fuel economy, and flexibility for their money should consider this one a must drive. It's just another great example of how much you're getting for your new car or I guess crossover dollar these days. Nissan's got something good going on with this thing and I think we'll be seeing a lot more from it. I'm Justin Pritchard.